Juliana Kupke was born October 10th, 1954, a Libra girly. Her parents, Maria and Hans Wilhelm Kupke, were so excited to have their little baby girl. She was their first and only child. Marie and Hans were zoologists, and they felt really passionately about studying nature. This is why when she was 14, they moved to the Amazonian rainforest to establish an ecological station where they would research the surrounding wilderness. They named this station Panguana. Juliana loved her time in the rainforest. She had a lot of different animals to help her parents look after. Her and her parents had a wonderful relationship. They were extremely close. They taught her everything she needed to know about the rainforest. But after spending a year and a half at the ecological station, educational authorities were like, no, you're not going to learn out there with just your parents in the middle of the jungle. <laughs> That is kind of crazy. Um, absolutely, absolutely not. not. So they made her go back to Lima in order to finish a normal high school education. So she traveled back with her mom and her father stayed at the station so he could continue their research and hold down the fort. She actually enjoyed her time back at school. She made good friends and fond memories and she really connected with everyone around her. Before she knew it, it was senior year and the last day of classes, December 19th, 19th. It was then that her mother suggested they fly back the day after to reunite with her father for Christmas. But Juliana was so excited about graduation that she asked her mom if they could stay a little longer so she could attend her graduation ceremony in prom. And since prom wasn't until the 23rd, that would mean that they would have to leave on Christmas Eve. Her mother was supportive though, and she agreed. I mean, she wanted Juliana to be able to experience these big milestones in her life. So after they came up with this plan, they started looking for flights to book. But there weren't a lot of flights. Actually, there was only one flight. Left. But they were grateful because at least there was one. So they went ahead and booked it. This flight was the Lanza Flight 508. And when they went to tell her dad about booking this flight, he was like, Um, wait, a Lanza Flight? Have you heard of their reputation? Um, I don't trust them. I don't want you to fly with them. But her mom was like, People fly all the time. People fly every day. What are the odds of anything happening? See, Lonza had issues before with plane crashes due to improper practices. It actually had been <laughs> that the engines had only been maintenanced by people who had worked on solely motorcycles. They also had been <laughs> for hiring pilots with improper licenses and also overcrowding planes. There was one situation where the plane max capacity was 91 but the amount of people on board was 102 this was one of the planes that crashed because of this it was rightfully so that her dad was worried but it also makes sense that her mom wasn't worried i mean how often do plane crashes happen right <laughs> not every day actually i don't know don't quote me on that maybe they do happen every day i don't know but like when i'm booking a flight the last thing on my mind is a plane crash because that's just bad juju. So they decided to continue on with that flight. And in the days leading up, Juliana gets to go to her graduation ceremony and prom. She was sad to leave all of her friends and leave the city of Lima, but she was also really excited to see her dad and get to go back to the rainforest because she loved it there. She was a natural there. And so there they were the morning after prom and it was time for them to pack up and make their way down to Panguana. They gathered their belongings and they headed to the airport. It just seems like a normal day, except for the fact that it was extremely busy at the airport. It was so overwhelming that they began to fear they wouldn't be able to leave that day due to an abundant amount of delays. So they were kind of stressed out, like what if we can't make it home today? What if we can't make it home for the holidays? What if we're stuck here with nowhere to go for another couple days? Like they didn't know what to think. But nonetheless, they were called to board flight 508.
they could hear sighs of relief all around them from other passengers who were boarding that plane, knowing they were able to fly out that day. So they boarded the packed flight. They could feel Christmas spirit in the air. They saw people storing their presents in the overhead cabins. They saw cakes and cookies in people's laps as they passed by them to get to their seats. When they got to their row, they stuffed away their belongings and they sat down. Their seats were row 19, and Juliana got the window seat, her mother got the middle seat, and the aisle seat was taken by a man that neither of them knew. The first 25 minutes of the flight was smooth sailing. They got sandwiches for lunch, there were people chatting all around them, except for the man next to them who quickly fell asleep right after boarding. But this is when they noticed the skies starting to get pretty gray. But again, they didn't think much of it, cause who would? It's cloudy, so what? You know what I mean? Like, so what, it's cloudy. A couple more minutes go by, and although they didn't think much of it at first, the skies got increasingly darker. And this is when Juliana's mother, Maria, started to feel a little bit of anxiety. Maria felt really anxious because out of their window, she could see a huge wall of black clouds that it looked like they were flying directly towards. Although her mother was starting to really stress out, Juliana was still fine. She was still level-headed. Like I said, she was a pretty chill girl. She continued to try to calm her mom down as they flew into the storm. When they flew into the thick of the storm, it was pitch black outside. They couldn't see anything. It was pitch black with the exception of flashes of light from lightning bolts. This is when things went completely left field. The plane started violently shaking from turbulence, so much so that it woke the man next to them up and he started immediately panicking. The plane wasn't in the storm for long before Juliana and her mother saw a bright strike of lightning hit the right wing of the plane. Her mother then screamed, this is the end because of what she had just witnessed. At this point, presents, cakes, and flowers were flying all around them. Screams filled their ears and the hysteria was suffocating. Juliana was in sheer shock and terror of what was happening around her. Due to the lightning strike, the plane started disintegrating and plummeting towards the ground. At this point, Juliana blacked out, and when she came back to, she realized she was no longer in the plane. She was attached to her row of three seats, but the two seats next to her were completely empty. Her mother and the man next to them were nowhere to be found. She sailed through the air briefly before she began to spiral down towards the ground. She felt the seatbelt squeezing her so tight that she couldn't breathe. In these moments, all she could do was stare at the forest below her as she plummeted into it. When she crashed, luckily, she fell through a series of vines that intertwined throughout the trees, and this was able to break her fall enough so that when she landed, it wasn't as hard and that helped her survive. But even though she survived the initial crash, Juliana Juliana spent 20 hours laying there unconscious after hitting the ground. When she finally regained consciousness, she was completely saturated in mud and leaves. It also must have been raining all night because she and everything around her was soaked. Also, Juliana could barely see. Not only did she have bad eyesight and lost her seeing glasses, but her right eye was completely swollen shut and then her left could only open enough to see a small slit. She noticed her right clavicle was also broken. It didn't break skin, but underneath her skin, she could tell that it had split in two and it was overlapping itself. She also had only one shoe on. Her other shoe was completely missing and and the shoe in question that she had on was a sandal, so wasn't that helpful. Actually, her whole outfit wasn't functional. Her outfit was a freaking miniskirt, the latest fashion trend. So Juliana was like, great, great, great. 
great, great, great. She was extremely exhausted and it was so hard for her to even muster up the strength to sit up. But when she finally managed to, the first thing she thought about was her mother. Well, I saw that nobody was around. And I thought, where is my mother? I must find my mother. But despite the overwhelming incident that had happened, Juliana pushed on and decided to look around the crash site for anything she could use or that could be helpful to her. After about a day of looking around the crash site, Juliana noticed a sound that had always been there, but she hadn't really been conscious of. A constant sound that just kind of fell into the background as she was so stressed and anxious about what happened. She realized that this sound was from trickling water somewhere in the forest. This is when she remembered something that happened at the ecological station with her parents a couple of years ago. An American team went on an expedition about 30 miles upstream from their station. The leader of the team accidentally shot himself in the leg, and since he was quite tall and heavy, the team found it ineffective to try to move him anywhere. This is when they sent a young student to get help. The student became lost, but luckily he came upon a stream and followed the water. It was two days later that he arrived at their station and was able to get help. So this is what Juliana was going to do. She decided to follow the water in hopes of that leading her to human civilization. She followed the sound of trickling water, which ended up being a pond that led to a stream. About a day went by and she was following the stream when she heard a peculiar and specific sound. The call of a crested chicken. I don't know if you've ever heard what a crested chicken is. I know I haven't, but apparently they got a peculiar, peculiar, peculiar sound. They are crested chickens, very primordial birds with a peculiar and awkward behavior. They produce a snorting sound highly atypical of birds, somewhat like this. Something like that. She knew that crested chickens live above rivers. They live above large rivers in groups. So she decided to change her course and follow those chickens. And she was so excited that she trusted her knowledge because what do you know, those calls led to a river. It was called Rio Shabanya. She knew how much the locals used these rivers for quick transportation. So she thought it couldn't be long before she came upon somebody and she could get help. But before walking into the river, Juliana grabbed a stick. For what you might ask? Well, let me tell ya. She also knew, little smarty pants, that her biggest threat would be poisonous stingrays. And Miss Girl only had one shoe. May I remind you, she only had one shoe. And that shoe was a sandal. So, <sighs> it wasn't looking promising, okay? But she grabbed a stick. So, she could poke the ground before she made any steps and ward off any potential dangers that lie ahead of her. Then, after following the river for a day, which was four days into her isolation, she heard something else that she recognized. A king vulture screeching from close by. She knew that they only hung around fresh, rotting flesh. She thought maybe this could lead her to another victim of the plane crash because she knows that there must be others out there. So she reluctantly followed the sound and this is how she found a terrifying scene. It was another row of seats that had been detached from the planes but with three dead bodies still strapped to them. The seats were stuck in the ground upside down. They looked like they were drilled into the dirt about three feet deep. It looked as though they hit the ground with a force of a bullet. And although unlikely, she was desperate to find her mother. One of the bodies was a woman and she wanted to make sure it wasn't her. So she used a stick to lift up the woman's foot and saw the lady had painted toenails. This is when she realized it couldn't have been her mom because she never painted her toenails. Although Juliana was relieved it wasn't her mom, she was still really distraught. After collecting her thoughts for a while, 
Juliana decided it would be best if she searched the crash site to try and find any loot. This is the heel of a lady's shoe. She didn't find much, but she was able to find a bag of candy and a Christmas cake. She ate the candy and then tried to eat the cake, but it was so gross from being mushed in the mud for so long that she just couldn't do it. So she decided to leave it and move on with her journey. She made her way back to the river and continued to follow it in the same direction. At this point, luckily, Juliana hadn't felt any real hunger yet, and she was able to stay hydrated by licking dewdrops off of leaves. Right now, her main concern was an open wound on her right arm. She had gotten a deep gash at some point during the initial crash, and it got completely infested with botfly larvae. And and she could see maggots crawling around in her skin. Although by the time she had woken up from the crash, it was already infected with maggots, they seemed to be multiplying and it was really starting to hurt. She was worried about getting blood poisoning and then having to amputate her arm at some point, but there was nothing she could do about that and it was getting dark, so she needed to focus on getting shelter. Every day, right before it got dark, she would begin looking for a safe place to sleep. Usually, this would be a nice slope or a thick tree trunk that she could rest on. After she found a safe place to rest, she would begin gathering leaves to put all over her body. And these leaves were so she could protect her skin from mosquitoes. The casual way she dealt with the mosquitoes and other vermin was the first thing that struck us about Juliane. Mosquitoes are a constant stressor in the rainforest. They surround you all day, but at night, they multiply. Her primary struggle at night was trying not to be eaten alive by massive swarms of mosquitoes. But, of course, that wasn't the only thing life swung at her. If she was really lucky, it would rain. And remember, <laughs> this is a rainforest, okay? <laughs> It was never gonna be a cute little tinkle. When nature <laughs> decided it would rain, it would usually go on for the whole night. It felt like needles poking all around her body because it was so cold and the raindrops were so heavy and thick. And she was like, Mm. Even the leaves couldn't save her in that moment, right? Even the leaves weren't helping. So she'd basically just have to sit cold and helpless until morning. During these hard nights, something that helped her feel better was knowing that someone was looking for her. Up until now, she had heard planes circling in the sky above her, and she just knew this was search parties looking for crash victims. But one morning, she woke up, and a whole day went by when she noticed she didn't hear those planes anymore. This is when Juliana realized they must have called off the search and her feelings of isolation grew much, much bigger. Days came and went and nothing. No huts, no food, no people. She was beginning to become completely apathetic. By the eighth day of being stranded, she would often just float along the river. She would just stare up at the sky and go hours without having a single thought. It was getting harder to do simple things. Finding shelter at night was a struggle. The wound on her arm was getting worse and she was starting to feel the hunger pains. Before she knew it, it was day 10. All of her hope was starting to dwindle. She didn't know if she would ever make it out of this rainforest alive. She had just been drifting in the water all day when she decided to stop in a sandbank to get some rest because she was so tired. She started dozing off right there in the sandbank before her mind became aware of something she was looking at. She snapped back into reality right when she realized she was looking at a boat. I thought, this can't be real. At this moment, I became wide awake, looked around. Where are the owners? The gears in her mind started turning again, and the thoughts were pouring in. Next to the boat was also a clearly man-made slope that led to who knows what, probably something man-made, probably some sort of civilization. I mean, hello. So she was like, I have to get over that slope. She mustered up all the strength she had left and crawled up that path on all 
fours. It took her hours before she reached the top and it was only a small hill. She didn't even have enough energy to stand up. When she finally made it, she found a hut. The hut had an engine in it that had been wrapped with tarp and then some gasoline. So it looked like it was like a garage or a workspace or something. This is where Juliana decided to take shelter for the night. She was like, a roof over my head? <laughs> Am I the Queen of England? Like, oh, I'm so lucky. As she laid there, she thought about how her need to eat was growing ever more urgent. It had been 10 days since the crash, and all she was able to eat was some candy. She remembered that Christmas cake she didn't eat and resented herself for leaving it behind. Even covered in mud and soggy at this point, it sounded like a decent meal. But hindsight is 2020. I mean, like I said, there were search planes hovering over her all the time. As far as she knew, she had a river that was probably going to lead her to some sort of civilization soon. She didn't expect to be in the rainforest for so long in isolation. I mean, she really didn't expect to be stuck for like another week. That night, poisonous frogs jumped all around her. They swarmed her. There was like a hundred of them. As she looked at them, she was just thinking how she knew that to a normal person, eating one of these would not be fatal. I mean, far from it, but in her weakened state, it was too risky. She felt as though nature was taunting her, giving her an abundance of food that she couldn't eat. A couple days ago, she could have caught a few and eaten them, but today, she was just too exhausted. So Juliana got some much needed sleep in the hut. When Juliana woke up that morning, she thought she must have still been dreaming because what she saw was three lumberjacks. That's when one of the men approached her and asked her if she needed help. He poured gasoline over her wound to ward out the maggots and then they loaded her into their boat to take her down to their village. The trip back ended up taking 11 hours almost all of which she slept through. When they arrived at the village, many of the locals were terrified at the sight of her. They thought they had seen a forest demon because her eyes were so bloodshot and her complexion was so gaunt. She learned that the man who approached her's name was Mauricio and she was so grateful for his help. They gave her food and had her airlifted to the hospital where she was able to make a full recovery. She also reunited with her father here, and he was so relieved to know that at least she was okay. Juliana is such a badass that despite her traumatic experience in the rainforest, after she recovered, she insisted on going back to help with the search. During the search, 14 other people were found who had survived the initial crash, but were too injured or too scared to move, so they ended up passing away. Juliana was the sole survivor of this plane crash. She was the only one to make it out alive of the jungle. They eventually found her mother's body on January 12, 1972. They discovered she had survived the initial crash, but she was too wounded to move and unable to find help, so a couple days later, she passed away. That is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed listening to Juliana Kupke's story. I know I enjoyed researching it. I love learning about strong, intelligent women. I love that she's a woman in STEM. I literally am a Juliana Kupke fan now. Um, if you're interested in learning more about her, there was also a documentary called Wings of Hope, which features her along with the director who actually was booked for that flight that she took and he ended up not getting on it. I will link the documentary in the description. It's definitely worth the watch because you can hear her first hand account and you can kind of see what she's like and get an idea of who she is. It's free to watch on YouTube. So yeah, I'll link it down below. I use that as like the primary source for this video because she really gets into the details of her experience in the rainforest. Also, if I got any of the storyline wrong, I am so sorry. It's kind of hard to tell because where you look, it kind of changes. So I tried to piece together the storyline best that I could. So if anything is slightly off, please correct me in the comments. I'll literally pin it. Um, but I'm pretty sure I got it as accurate as I could. Yeah, just let me know if I got any of the timeline wrong. But 
I'm pretty sure I try my best, okay? If you made it this far into the video, I love you. Um, yes, I love you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Leave any suggestions in the comments below. I would really appreciate it if you liked or subscribed. Maybe you can subscribe. Bye. I hope you have a good day. Bye.